creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living today. We're going to learn how to make some vintage paper crafts. We'll learn how to oven dry tomatoes and show how to tint fabric by using crayons. One of my guests is Shannon Wooten and she's with the New Mexico Cooperative Extension Service. Shannon's going to demonstrate making some vintage paper crafts including paper wheels, pom-pom wreaths, subway art and much more. She's from Roswell, New Mexico. Another guest is Carol Finster, and she's a cookbook author and dietitian, and she'll show several ways to preserve tomatoes to prolong their taste and good nutrition. Tomatoes are an important part of a healthy diet, whether it's a paleo diet, the Mediterranean diet, or some of the others. Carol's company is Savory Palette Incorporated, and she lives in Centennial, Colorado. And we'll also talk to Evelyn Terhune, a crafter who's going to demonstrate fabric tinting with crayons, which is a great technique that even younger children will enjoy as much as the older ones will. Her company is Ozark Crafts, and she's from Gilbert, Arkansas. Evelyn, it's nice to have you here. I know you've been sewing and teaching for many, many years, and you have lots of the new gadgetry machines and things, but you were telling me earlier about when you were growing up how you learned to really get involved in crafts and, and hands-on projects. Yes, I was, and this is a project I'm going to show you today that is both retro and current. <laughs> I actually got into crafting with my grandmother and great-grandmother. They would hand-embroider their dish towels and mm -hmm. pillowcases and then let us grandkids color them with just old-fashioned Crayola crayons. Um, the, it still works and you can create a permanent dye with those crayons. And you can, no, no fancy machines, doesn't cost anything. That's, that's amazing. Right. <laughs> that's right, and most people have, have some them. on uh -huh. hand. Even broken ones will work. That's true. This is a little apron. You, are these mm -hmm. your grandkids that they did are. this? They are. This is uh, so neat. What I did was trace around their hands, and on this I just used a Sharpie pen because it's a permanent ink, uh -huh. and then let each one choose whatever color they wanted to to color in. I did write the letters of their names so they'd mm -hmm. be roughly the same size, uh -huh. and let them color that. And each year what they'll do is put their hands over their hands, trace around it again, and then they'll have rainbow hands as they're growing. But That's they love neat. doing it. Yeah, you can do the same concept for birthday parties, whatever. Oh, it it's would a be a good project. activity, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, that that's really, and this is just a little apron that mm -hmm. they can use for lots of things. Right. Now, this right here is a placemat that I made to go with my dishes, the colors that are uh -huh. in those, but I wanted some subtleties on my flowers. What I did on that was just tint my fabric with crayons so that I could get that subtlety. I knew I was going to outline it with my... Um, sewing machine, just sure. stitching it down, you can see that. so I didn't worry mm -hmm. about edges too much, and I'm going to show you how I accomplished that. Okay. I tend to like prints because it gives me a little texture, and I'll just make a tulip because they're very simple. And you know, for those of us who aren't artistic, mm -hmm. I know you are, but kids' coloring books, uh, cookie sure. cutters, things like that are so good to use as patterns. Absolutely. Now you can see I've drawn them there, mm -hmm. and I tend to in the corner test my crayons that I'm going to use just to see what the colors do. If I want light, I'll get a white, put some light in the middle, mm -hmm. and then I'll go ahead and put some other colors around the edges. I like the main color to show through pretty well. And I see what you mean about using a small print. It gives mm -hmm. it dimension. It does. It's not a flat yeah. coloring. And then I put maybe a little bit darker in there. See how much rounder it's getting already? Mm -hmm. I can put some probably darker down here because Near the stem, you tend to have darker colors. <laughs> okay, and then back behind, I would come in with a purple. Hope I'm not drawing in front of what we need to show here. No, that but looks can you good. tell what mm -hmm. I'm doing there? That's all I'm going to do right now. You get the effect. I don't think I need to do the other two leaves. But okay. the important trick here is now we need to heat set this. And to do that, I need to grab a couple of paper towels. The reason we use paper towels is there is wax with the right. color in here. You want to keep the dye on the fabric, but not the wax. <laughs> Good point. So I've got a hot iron here. Now, are I'll you put using steam or dry, or does it matter? It doesn't really matter, but oh. I put it down for about 10 seconds, and I don't want to iron it move like it. this. If I had a big space, I'd just move it and press again, mm -hmm. 
and any lift. excess would come off on my paper towel. Not the iron, You too. can see there's a little bit, a little uh -huh. hint of it right there. But I've got my nice permanent color right there. And, and then, then it, it is washable then after oh, yes. you set it. And uh -huh. then I would, when I had this heat set, I would fuse it to my fusible, mm -hmm. put it on my project, and then uh -huh. proceed like you normally would. And it has a lot more texture than if I'd just drawn the flower itself uh -huh. and then put it on oh, just yeah. with thread. And I can see this little bit. This is the same pattern It is right exactly here, the, the same, same pattern. Fabric. Same fabric. Well, it's, it's fun, and I, I still think it's fun to go back and, and do some of these crafts that we did learn when we were kids and pass it on to our kids and grandkids. Yes, and this is one of those projects that kids can be really proud of. They can take something that they've done. They can draw. Mm -hmm. Let them draw a dinosaur or whatever uh -huh. they want to draw and take it in as a gift to Granny or to, to their homeroom uh -huh. teacher, whoever, and uh, they feel accomplishment. Feel proud of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think this is great. Thank you so much for showing us this easy well, craft. thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. Carol, thank you so much for being with us today. I have one of your cookbooks and I love going through it and looking for recipes because you don't have to be a celiac. You don't, don't. have to be on a specific diet. In fact, it's for everyone. It is. And uh, w some of the things call for tomatoes because yes. we use tomatoes, tomato sauce, tomato paste in so many uh, recipes. But you know, they're pretty expensive, out of season especially. Out of season especially, mm -hmm. or if you buy organic, you can oh, uh, yeah. spend about three bucks for just a, a tub of of little um, grape tomatoes like uh -huh. that. But tomatoes are a wonderful vegetable mm -hmm. and we all want to eat more vegetables. So what I thought I'd talk about today is how to dry them so you can preserve them. And, and they're so full of nutrients that we need. Oh, they are. These beautiful red luscious little orbs there are full of lycopene and vitamin C and the red color lets you know there's beta carotene there. I also know that the tomatoes are better for you when they are cooked. Somehow that releases some releases enzymes. Releases it. Yeah, that are so I would hope that oven drying them as I'm going to talk about will qualify as cooking. Uh -huh. I don't know. And I guess we might as well just say up front because I, I've heard that you're supposed to not refrigerate or refrigerate yeah. tomatoes, yeah. but I very seldom leave them on the counter. It's it's a little known fact that people either don't know or don't want to believe because we're we're schooled to put things in the refrigerator to prolong Produce. them. Produce. Uh huh. As it turns out, tomatoes are one of those rare uh, vegetables that actually re re release an enzyme that irreversibly damages the, it makes them mealy, it damages the texture. Oh. That's why your, your tomatoes will be mealy if they're in the mm -hmm. fridge. And it somehow depresses or diminishes the, the wonderful flavor. The flavor, oh yeah. I know that. Uh -huh. So, but here's the, the uh, catch 22 when you don't refrigerate stuff and you leave it on the countertop, it deteriorates it more quickly. <laughs> so yeah. what are you supposed to do? Well, what I've come up with, and, and this is not anything new, it's just my way of saving a few bucks because I hate throwing away half too. a tub of tomatoes. So you can buy uh, what we call sun-dried tomatoes here. Mm -hmm. This is a common brand. And this is what they look like. But you can dry them at home. And so these are my dried versions of tomatoes. On the right are little red grape and on the left are yellow grape uh -huh. tomatoes. And you these can, are done in the oven. They are done in the oven. It is so simple. You can actually also use tomatoes that are kind of past their prime. If you oh, look at these. This looks like the ones I always have. Right. <laughs> we all have those. Uh -huh. You know the ends and these are actually They're looking. They're kind of shrivelly. They get shrivelly. You can still use them and I've used them when they're all shrivelly all over. As mm -hmm. long as, and I'm going to show you how I do it, as when you cut in, there's no mold inside. Oh, okay. so you do have to watch for you that. You do have to mm -hmm. watch for that because that can happen. So mm -hmm. what I do on a, on a countertop with a, a cutting, these are fine, oh, and then I'll okay. cut just a few more of these. Oh, so it's better to, to cut them in half. I think so uh -huh. because they dry a little more quickly. And the reason I like grape tomatoes is because and these are fairly large. I, I, they are. You uh -huh. know, but you can use Roma or cherry. Mm -hmm. You can also use those pretty, oh, I'm, I'm not sure what those are, early bird or American, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You have to cut them in um, circles. Quarter. Oh, circles. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. But the thing I like about these is that there isn't as much seed or as much juice in mm -hmm. these. So, Which also makes them dry faster. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about an hour or two maybe in the oven. Now, if people have dehydrators, 
maybe we can just suggest they use them. You but can. most of us don't have those. Most of us so. don't have those, and so we're through with that. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have a dehydrator. It's a round device, and it's got layers, Big, uh -huh. and you have to plug it in, and, and uh, that's okay. But I got rid of it when I found out I could do it in my oven. It's Washington. so much easier. Now, you can't use your oven while that's going on, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. So you can do as much as you want. And um, what I like to do, and I, I'm just doing a few to show you how it works, I then toss them with a little bit of olive oil and just a little bit, and you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. Oh. If you decide you just want them plain, that's okay. I think it makes them look a little prettier and glossier, as you can see. Yeah. So I toss them like that. A little seasoning. And a little seasoning. I'll spread them out here, and just so they're not touching. That's all you want to worry about, because they'll dry better if they're not touching. So, so a they, bigger pan? You could a bigger do pan, a lot right. More. Uh -huh. I've done a huge... 18 by 13 pan, as long as it fits in it's your in oven, oven. <laughs> it'll work. And then a little salt, uh -huh. and you don't have to if salt them. You, you don't mm -hmm. have to. A yeah. little pepper, if you want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You could also sprinkle all your favorite herbs, um, maybe a little oregano or Italian, if you wanted mm -hmm. um, a, a flavor. A little chili pep powder. A that little might chili be good. powder. Garlic. A little smoked paprika <laughs> would, be, or would be really, really Sounding good, too. Good. Whatever mm -hmm. you want. And uh -huh. then pop them in the oven. At what temp? If you're using your regular oven, I would use about 200. If on your oven, and many of them do now have a convection setting, I would use 180. But somewhere between 180 and 200, you're going to be fine. Uh -huh. And then don't go away. Don't leave the kitchen. And we don't cover them at you all. You don't cover okay. them. And then the air will slowly, the hot oven air, will slowly dry them out. And this is what they will look like here. Mm -hmm. And then when they're done, what I do is just pop a few, it, it, you can fill this, these are little snack bags and they uh -huh. work just fine. Put them in the bag, seal it up, and label, label it, it. Uh -huh. so you know what you've got. And then you are all set for snacking. People mm -hmm. eat them as snacks. You can use them in soups and stews. You can toss them into dips. I like using them in quiche. I just think they... Oh, yeah. And if you so cook much, them, they're, they're going to be exactly like you would fresh. Exactly. They are so much more flavorful because you have gotten rid of all the moisture. Uh-huh. And so all you have left concentrated. is... Concentrated. Uh -huh. Concentrated. It's like dried fruit. They're just more um, intensely flavored. Uh -huh. And in a quiche, they add just a little bit of color. And uh, I've used them in um, stews, uh, uh -huh. Dips, casseroles, casseroles would certainly are work perfect. Well. Mm -hmm. Whatever you Anything use you tomatoes in normally, use the, the dried tomatoes, and and then you're saving and you're you're saving a ton of money because at, at about two dollars um, oh, yeah. a wasted carton, that adds up. Well, it certainly does. That's I'm, I'm really glad to know that I can even use the ones that are yes. slightly shriveled. Just, just don't them away. take any that have any little rotted parts. Just toss those right away. But uh -huh. these look beautiful. They do. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Carol. Thank you. Shannon, thank you so much for being with us. And you're going to show us lots of things that are quick and easy to make. And I'm sure you look all year long for new and exciting ideas, don't That's you? That's right. We have an annual Christmas show. So I'm always looking for crafts that people can do, um, everybody can do. Mm -hmm. They're not very hard to put together. They're supplies that we have at home and they can just get started. And we were talking too about how crafts sort of go in cycles. They um, do. And you, I, you may have made it 20, 30 years ago, but there's a new twist now. There is a new twist to it, um, especially with the supplies that are uh, out there. Yeah. They're now, um, we've got some recycled uh, ones, old crafts, and then some new crafts. Some new ones. Yes. Well, let's start out with these coffee filter wreaths. <clears throat> and I have to tell you, I couldn't really picture that these were going to be this pretty. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We wonder that it, it, you know, well, when you thought of coffee filter wreaths, you thought, oh, that, that's mm -hmm. a craft that looks like a craft, maybe. Right. And this one doesn't. It's very this elegant. Is, um, very elegant. This is the coffee filters. That's the tan uh -huh. coffee filters. And then we have the white or the kind of the off-white coffee filters. And they're and just embellished put some glitter with on. Uh -huh. ribbon and uh, maybe a few flowers, ornaments. Mm -hmm. oh, I like this. Uh -huh. I just now realized. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. They're so pretty. Okay, so you're going to show us how. Right, right. Well, what you're going to do, you're going to start with some type of frame. And this is just an example of maybe paper a plate paper that, plate. Uh -huh. um, I probably wouldn't suggest the styrofoam, but this is what I had at the house. So uh -huh. um, a paper plate, you're going to cut a circle, and that's your back of your frame. Or you can use a hoop. 
something that you have that maybe you're not embroidering anymore and you're just uh -huh. going to use a yeah. hoop or you can start with a, a grapevine wreath or a styrofoam wreath, something like that. Oh. So. So you this need is any the type base. of base. This okay. Is, this is the base. Then you're going to take the coffee filters. and now, probably the even a big one like this starts on something this size? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I will show you this one. This one is actually kind oh, of one of uh -huh. the, the grapevine wreaths. Uh -huh. And it'll be a good way to recycle some of those wreaths that don't look too good right, right now. Right, right, that you're uh -huh. taking apart and uh -huh. you want to do, do something different. So what you're going to start with, um, you've got your base, and then you're going to mm -hmm. have coffee filters. And probably the hardest part is getting the coffee filters apart. Uh -huh. So it you're going to take them. And there's two ways you can do this. You're going to fold Flatten the coffee it. filter uh -huh. in half, fold it again, and then kind of make a little flower. Oh, out of okay. It. Or another way that you can do this is you can have uh, some type of pin and you're going to poke in the middle and you just wrap around. And wrap around. And it. then you have a flower oh, there. That's fast. And you attach it to your base in with hot glue. Oh, um, uh -huh. And if you're using styrofoam, you definitely want to use a low temp glue gun. Uh -huh, the warm. Um, but you're going to go um, in rows. And there you have the coffee filter wreath. And, and so how many times did you go around um, it? It's, well, it depends on the size of the base, but it's going to take about 300 coffee filters. Okay. Two to, <laughs> two okay. to 300 coffee filters. So you can't drink coffee during that time because uh, you're right. using. That's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, that's interesting. And uh, now show us this uh, okay. ornament. This, or, this next one is um, the, the ornament. It's called the paper wheel. Wheel. And uh -huh. They can be hung on the tree. You can make them any size. And I have to tell you, um, I, I saw these paper wheels, and my daughter got married a couple years ago, and I hung Chinese lanterns down from a candy bar. That's what well, it looks why like. Why didn't I do the paper wheels? They <laughs> would have been in the colors I wanted. I wouldn't have had to spray paint them. But what you're going to do, you're going to take scrapbooking paper. Mm -hmm. That's, and are these 12 inch? This is, uh -huh. this is 12 inches, and you're going to fold it accordion. in accordion uh -huh. style, just like we did when we made those fans. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and so, so you have that, and then once you're... Um, and how many sheets will it take? It's going to take three. Three sheets. It's, it's okay. going to take three. And you don't need to attach them to start with. I mean, no. we'll fold all three sheets right. separately. You're, you're going to fold all mm -hmm. three sheets separately. And I'll go ahead and just kind of finish this one. Oh, okay. And then you're going to fold it in half. Okay. And then you have three of these, and you start stapling the ends together. Like this will staple here. And there you have do your, all three of them. Do all it? three, right? That's so they're sneaky. all stapled. I can't see where you, you can't see. Oh, here it is. There uh -huh. you go. Yeah, it's hard to tell. And you can punch a hole at the top, attach it with some ribbon, and I think I um, like when you put something. That's right. Something in, in the middle uh -huh. to cover your. You could even stack two of these together. You could stack two together, and they could go on wow. packages. They could go on the tree. You could decorate a wedding for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think it's endless. And so. I noticed this was like music sheets, and you said it was just old music right, sheets. Right. It was. Uh -huh. It was old music sheets, and if you have any of your stamps that um, do punch the borders, the punch the edges on them. Right. You can do that. You can use your decorative scissors to give you oh, a different uh -huh. look. Um, you could also, when you have this together, you can take your scissors and just round this also. Mm -hmm. a little scallop a little type scallop edge. Oh, that edge. would be easy to do. And okay. And then put these down here. I can okay. remember making these types of book crafts years ago. But this looks so much prettier <laughs> than what we made. Yes, <laughs> these are the ma magazine trees. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, all it takes is a, a magazine. magazine. <laughs> a magazine. <laughs> yeah. So, and these are embellished with a little spray adhesive and some glitter. Uh huh. And then we just added a little flower top, or I took three pieces of paper and snipped them inside and kind of curled oh, them. Oh, made a little. So, uh, okay. Right. And right. I like you put them on little candle holders. Just yes. To yes. I think the pedestals were kind of nice just to mm -hmm. lift them up and give them a little elegant look to them. But you could spray paint these green or if sure. you had a, another certain color that you wanted. So, but what you're going to do, you're going to take, take a magazine and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to bend it back, mm -hmm. kind of break that spine right there and you're you're going to want to do that several things throughout oh just okay to kind of so break, start with that break okay. that spine and the first thing you're going to do the first fold first page is 
Um, take the right hand corner and fold now, it. You do take to the, the covers spine. off, or can um, you, you use the cover? You can use the covers. Oh, okay. You can use the covers, and that's your first I couldn't fold. Remember. And you're going to do that throughout every page of the magazine. When you're watching television, that's you right. Can this sit is a great fold project to sit there because a lot of us just can't sit there. We, <laughs> we think we have to be doing something. That's true. So then the second fold is the bottom right hand corner, and you fold it in to make that little point. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't remember that part. Okay. And then what you're going to do, your last fold is to fold it towards the spine again. Mm -hmm. And you just keep doing that. that and those uh, three folds those are all three you folds. do for the that's, whole magazine. That's all it takes. Your, your first oh, here's fold a cover. is towards uh -huh. the magazine. Yeah. Then your second fold is the bottom up and then folded towards the center. Okay, let me and look there. at that one more time. I see now why yeah. that you do that second one. Uh -huh. So fold it toward the spine, uh -huh. then fold the bottom up. Right. Then fold the and whole then, thing over. Uh -huh. And then that makes it stand up. And that up. makes it stand I up. I see. And there, wow. and there you have it. And you would just keep continuing. This this is the second fold right here. So if you uh -huh. wanted to look like that, you could go with that. Oh. But, okay. but by folding it uh, up, yeah. that gives you um, an even edge at the oh, bottom. Oh, I see. Yeah. And okay. then uh, this, you just spray painted these? Um, spray painted it. One thing I might add that you want to add some type of base, either oh. a square piece of... Um, scrapbooking paper or a little lightweight uh -huh. cardboard, cardboard or something like that. And just, you just, just glued to keep it. it together. Just, just hot, hot glued, glued it. it. Right. And then and all, you know, we all have a whole box probably of one ornament of one style or a little leftover a little, ribbon. A little ribbon, or, um, mm -hmm. little small Christmas ornaments. These are um, so cute. So. Much prettier than what I remember doing. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Because I don't even think we spray painted them back no, then. Uh -uh. We just left made them. Left uh -huh. them. So. And I've got to ask you, you said this is called Subway Art. This is called Subway Art. Why? Um, <laughs> well, you asked what Subway Art is. It's, it's kind of those signs maybe as if you're in a subway. I've never been in, in the subway. Or if you're driving by, you, you have to see a sign, but you have to read it rather quickly. So these are just words put oh, together. Sub, okay. And um, it's the hottest thing out there now. Uh -huh. So what you're going to do, you can do this on your computer. All you need is a computer, a printer, and some some type of program, mm -hmm. a word program or publisher or something, something like that. But what you do is you use text boxes. I don't know if you're uh -huh. familiar. Yes. Um, uh -huh. you, you insert all kinds of text boxes into your page, and you're gonna. Um, one thing I forgot to tell you is you're gonna want to move your margins in because your paper is eight and a half by, by 11, eleven, and your frames are eight by ten. ten. Oh, so, okay. So make that sure you sense. move your margins in. Then you're gonna insert the text boxes. And you start adding words. Just words. Um, I'm going to show you this one. This one is that a has lots of words. Christmas one. And so, so this is the main focus, the Christmas. Uh -huh. And then you start thinking of words, manger, peace, elves, trees, hot, hot chocolate, chocolate. Faith, <laughs> joys, white men. And you put those into those text boxes. You change the font. You change the Colors. size, the color, and you can move them around. And... Um, and I bet you this is an old frame this you have had because I have one right. just like that's it. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, this is a neat way also for a um, a baby shower gift. You could start with uh, maybe the baby's name in the middle and then add sugar. And like Catherine, you could add sugar and spice uh -huh. and everything nice and just um, well for a wedding shower. A, a work wedding their shower names with and their the last dates name and, and the oh. values and things they like to do. What and, a neat and idea! That kind of thing and very inexpensive. You just uh -huh. print it on some cardstock paper or you could put it on scrapbooking paper and frame it up and you have oh, a nice I, original That gift. is just amazing. Subway art. I just That's like the right. name Subway of it. Art. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shannon. Thank I sure you. appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to make frilly fringed flowers, talk about turkey as a breakfast option, and discuss meditation. One of my next guests is a designer and crafter, and she's going to demonstrate making fun flowers using a combination of fabrics, wool felt, and a special brand of scissors to do all the fine cutting. Another guest is with Butterball, and she's going to talk about new turkey breakfast options. This will include some quick and easy morning recipes and tips on how to make breakfast fun with and for the kids. And lastly, we'll talk to a spiritual master about meditation, what it is, the benefits, the best time to practice it, and how long we should meditate. All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. 
I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much, and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6600 Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6600 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.